pack of Avalon cigarettes, please. Yes, sir. Oh, just a moment, sir. Don't forget your change. You'd never guess, but Avalon's cost you less. So why not always travel on with Avalon? Good evening, friends. Good evening. This is Del King saying welcome to Avalon time with Red Foley, Jeanette, Edna Stilwell, the Avalon Chorus, Bob Strong and his orchestra, and Red Skelton. The orchestra opens the program with Don't Look Now. gentlemen, Avalons are the newest and most important recent development in cigarette history. They're quality cigarettes that sell for less, three to five cents less than other popular price brands. And three to five cents saved on every pack of cigarettes you smoke really means something. Take it from me. It means many, many extra dollars in your pocket every year. But without knowing it, you'd never guess that Avalons cost you less. The quality of the Turkish and domestic tobaccos blended in union-made Avalons cannot be surpassed by any other cigarette, regardless of price, regardless of brand. For cigarette value never known before, try Avalon. Why not make it tonight? And now we bring you the only man in radio who hangs around the Navy Pier so he can get jokes by the gobs, <laughs> Red Skelton. Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Say, Dell, speaking of sailors, I took my first cruise last week on the SS Panhandler. <laughs> Just a tramp steamer. <clears throat> but... But the boat was nice, though. It was very particular who rode on it. In fact, it was so particular, they wouldn't take anything but registered cattle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mm. the, <laughs> but it was really a nice boat. Everything aboard was ship shaped. <laughs> In fact, the girls aboard were ship shaped. <laughs> My uncle. What happened? <laughs> My uncle used to be a well known sea captain. In fact, even the finance company calls him the old skipper. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the first time I ever rode on a boat, but it was like being on a train. I rode the rail all the way. <laughs> the captain <laughs> the captain looked at me and he says, uh, my good man, you have a weak stomach. <laughs> at a time like that, he wanted distance. <laughs> Boy, what a captain. Look at... <laughs> the captain wanted me to eat at his table, but I refused. Why should I pay for a first-class ticket and then eat with a help? <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, what a screwy captain, though, he yelled, all hands on deck. I put my hands on deck and everybody stepped on them. <laughs> Our first stop was a little island where a lot of native boys were diving in the water for pennies. Of course, I didn't get much out of that. <laughs> Maybe five or six cents. <laughs> but you meet a lot of strange people aboard. They were aboard. There was one lady, a fat lady, with a home bottom, <laughs> built like a house. <laughs> She spent the whole night walking around the deck trying to reduce. Well, I guess you read someplace about those hits that passed in the night. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I'm really lucky to be here. There was a terrible storm blew up the third day, and everybody thought the boat was going to sink, and the captain started yelling, Save the women and children first! Well, you know, it was disgusting the way some of the men tried to get in those lifeboats. No kidding. One guy nearly tore my dress off of me. <laughs> Well, I think I've been out here sailing around long enough, so I'll pull into shore. Sure. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> See, I even read the blotches on the paper. That's marvelous. 
I'll let the speedboat strong take over with Begin the Begin. Hit it, sailor, but salty. <laughs> the orchestra playing Begin the Begin. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, Bob Strong is the only conductor that doesn't lead the band with a baton. He just waves his hair. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, say, Skelton, I know that you have on a new suit tonight. Yeah, I was down in the dumps today, and I always buy a new suit when I'm down in the dumps. I was wondering why you bought your suit, Skelton. <laughs> What'd you say, Del? That was Roger, the fiddle player in the band. Oh, little slur echo, eh? <laughs> Why, that guy's not even a fiddle player. I'll bet I'm more at home with a violin than he is. Not on the radio, Skelton. No. On the radio, you'd be more at home with bows. <laughs> okay, Major. And you better not get caught in the rain with that suit. Look, I ain't worried about the rain. This is a good suit. Maybe you think so, but confidentially, it shrinks. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Hmm. Is that the telephone bell? It ain't Jimmy Fiddler. <laughs> I'll take that. Hello. Avalon Cigarette Program, Red Sel uh, Skelton speaking. <laughs> Can't even say my own name. <laughs> Hello, Skelton. Yes. This is Sergeant Brannick at our police headquarters. Uh? We've been hearing a lot about you, Skelton. Yeah, well, you can't prove anything. <laughs> now, look, I won't talk until I get a mouthful. A mouthpiece. <laughs> what we want to get you for is the policeman's ball. I didn't take the policeman's ball. Honest, I didn't. <laughs> There's the wisecracking. We want you to come over and entertain at the policeman's annual ball. Oh, the ball. Oh, the policeman's ball. Oh, sure. Listen, I'll bring the whole gang over. Can you send a couple of squad cars over to pick us up? No, but uh, I think the chief might send over the paddy wagon. Yeah, the paddy wagon? You want me to come over and entertain at the policeman's ball? He's going to send a patrol wagon for me to ride in? Red Skelton riding a wagon that they haul criminals around in? Tell him okay. <laughs> Tell him to send wagon number two. The springs are better. <laughs> that's our will. That's our will. And please, Skelton, mm. do you know where Fred Allen lives? Well, yes, I know where Fred Allen lives. Why? Well, if you can get him, you don't have to bother coming over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll be there. Don't worry. Hey, gang, come on. Hey, Bob Strong, get the boys together. We're going over to the policeman's ball. Okay, Skelton. What music shall I take? Rhapsody and Blue Coat? <laughs> No, and don't take flat foot flugey either. Hello, Mr. Skelton. Hello, Edna. Say, boy, me going to a policeman ball. You know, I'm getting to be a big shot. How would you like to be as important as I am? Why, are you important, Edna? I'll say. You know, next week the president and his wife are going to visit the San Francisco World Fair. Well, how does that make you important, Edna? Why, Mrs. Roosevelt's going to write and tell me all about it. My word. No, my day. 
<laughs> Some connection. Say, where's Red Foley? He's over there rehearsing his lines for that Western picture he's going to make. Yeah? Yeah. Let's sneak over and listen to what he's saying. Why, killing's too good for you, Pies and Pete. Why, you on the critter have a good hey, notion. Hey, Foley. Quiet, tender foot, I'll grill really you like it was an oil well. <laughs> you wouldn't dare. <laughs> hey, listen, tender. <laughs> Oh, you I said that. that. <laughs> I forgot myself. <laughs> hey, what do you want? Well, look, we're going over the policeman's ball. Now, you're not such a bad hombre that you're afraid of the cops, are you? Oh, don't worry about me, Skelton. Nobody's been able to pin anything on me since I was a baby. Yeah. <laughs> not bad, Jack. Uh, come in. Uh, Mr. Benny. Uh, Benny? No, I'm Red Skelton. Say, how many miles is it to walk, Egan? <laughs> Oh, there's a guy who's really been knocking around the country. <laughs> I hope he don't get into the Yankee Stadium and start rapping on Joe Lewis. <laughs> By the way, Red, I got your tickets for the Lewis Galento fight. Oh, they good? Yeah, the best I could do, though, was the two seats in the fourth row. Well, that's well. Two seats in the fourth row at the Yankee Stadium. These seats are in the fourth row of a Fifth Avenue bus. Yeah. <laughs> Fifth Avenue bus? I can't see the Lewis and Galento fight from there. Be the same thing. Yeah, They're going to drive up in front of the Yankee Stadium, ring a bell, and knock over a beer barrel. <laughs> <laughs> Say, you know, if I have to think I'm going to the fight, I better cancel my uh, lesson in public speaking today. Are you taking lessons in public speaking? Yeah, I've been muffing too many words lately, so I'm uh, taking a course in public speaking. And you know, when I get finished, you know what I'll be? Sure. <laughs> public loudmouth number one. <laughs> Now, listen, wise guy, I'll be a great orator. Say, you don't even know what an orator is, Captain. Oh, I do, too. An orator is a guy who's willing to lay down your life for somebody else's country. <laughs> <laughs> Say, uh, come on, let's all of us get going over the policeman's vault. What are you going to sing, Jeanette? Just a minute, just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Say, who are you? I'm Professor Tommy Mack, your voice instructor. <laughs> My voice instructor? Do you always talk that way? No, only when I speak. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready for your lesson? Yeah, I need somebody to teach me how to read a script. I'll tell you, Drew, last week it was positively disgusting the way you twipped over your twist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all I need is a few more months and I'll be in the fur business. <laughs> now, the question you must concentrate on is enunciation, pronunciation, and fiction. <laughs> Boy, what that guy... What that guy couldn't do with the any penny fishes. <laughs> oh, a white guy, huh? Don't pay any attention to him. That's Roger, the fiddle player. Now, I just want to see how you control your breath. Yeah. Now, let's see your pant like this. Okay. <laughs> How's that? No good. Your pants are too short. <laughs> But most of my trouble comes from not knowing where to place my tongue. Well, the tongue should be plain, but it should be placed between two fingers of bread. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean the tongue in your mouth? If I be I'm so sorry. Now open up your mouth, please. Uh, well, the teeth are okay. Yeah. The teeth? What are teeth? Teeth is for for tooth. Many tooth make teeth. Teeth is not for tooth. Without teeth, you can eat. Any dope knows what teeth is. <laughs> you ought to know, Professor. What's the matter with that guy? He's doing something? He's better not put it to my... Don't pay no attention, sir. <laughs> Listen, Professor, you better hurry and give him my first lesson. I've got to get over the policeman's ball. Okay, now the first thing you do is you strengthen the muscles of the skull by pinning on the bar. Oh, uh, will the bartender object? Ah, <laughs> oh, you're stupid too, huh? <laughs> well, I think we'd better learn how to recite. Recite? Yes, oh. so follow me. I did not get over the cat and the fiddle. <laughs> I did a fiddle, the cat and the fiddle, and the cow and jumped out. Oh, I'm all mixed up myself. <laughs> I did a fiddle, the cat and the fiddle, and the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed. The little dog laughed. You think that's fun? Say, where did you get that goon? <laughs> Now, go get excited, Professor. Hey, wait a 
Wait a minute, Professor. You better come back and finish my list. Say, he's got a heavenly voice, hasn't he? Uh, that's the first time I ever knew, though, that heaven could speak. <laughs> Sing it, Jeanette. We gotta go to the ball. you go, you'll find tobacco dealers selling more and more Avalon cigarettes. And you want to know the reason? Well, I'll tell you. Because Avalons have that national appeal of highest quality plus real money-saving economy. Two all-important points of superiority that smart buyers immediately recognize and take advantage of. Avalons are positively second to none in quality. They're union-made from the very finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos. And still, they cost three to five cents less per pack than other popular price brands. Now imagine, three to five cents less for cigarettes that can't be topped. Ladies and gentlemen, cash in on this. The biggest cigarette money-saving opportunity of the day. So the next time, ask for Avalon. You'd never guess they cost you less. We now take you to the policeman's ball where we find Red Skelton dancing with Edna Stilwell on the crowded dance floor. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Edna. She oh, that's all feet. right. You know, Red, I dreamt I was dancing with you last night. You did? Yeah. When I woke up, my little brother was pounding my feet with a flat iron. <laughs> Say, let's try some of that jitterbug stuff. Come on, let's jive, baby. Let's get on the old boogaloo. Hot dog, get the stuff. Uh-oh, there's a cop. Don't give you the right name. Come I mean, on, man. Well, I was... Well, I was a clown there, you. Uh, what's the matter, officer? Can't you see that sign there? No heavy trucking on the outer jiveway. <laughs> no heavy trucking on the outer driveway. That's what is known as corn off of the cop. <laughs> Well, okay, officer, we won't let it happen again. <laughs> Gee, look at the policeman, Edna. Most cops I've seen since the last nursemaid picnic. <laughs> Say, look at the dirty look those bulls are giving me. Ah, don't you guys look at somebody else for a change? Well, look who's here. Are you a policeman? Well, I ain't friends. You on the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lee, the policeman. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Skelman, I'm just dying to get my hooks on some crooks. Yeah. Why, I've got a gun and handcuffs. Yeah. Why, just take a look at these snarky-looking bracelets. <laughs> See, there's some bracelets, all right. Don't you think they look more business-like, though, if they didn't have those rhinestones in them? <laughs> what kind of a policeman are you, Herky? Well, you see, it's like this, Miss Stilwell. When I first joined the force, I went to the mounted police headquarters and said, Give me a man a horse he can ride. <laughs> yeah? 
I wasn't the man. <laughs> so they made me a patrol. Mm -hmm. Then I complained about patrolling the streets because it made my feet spread. Mm. Now I sit in a radio car all day and I'm say it's just something tell I'm <laughs> Have you done any dancing yet, Herky? Oh, shucks, Mr. Skelton, I can't dance. You can't? Because when I dance, I exert myself. And when I exert myself, I glow! <laughs> oh. Well, when you got to glow, you got to glow. <laughs> well, you know, you can always get out of your wet clothes and do a dry martini. <laughs> oh, Mr. Skelton, my goodness, I hope you don't ever use anything like that on your program. I wouldn't dare. <laughs> Well, I gotta go now. You see, I'm just a rookie, and tonight they're making me scrub the jail floors. Yeah. So I gotta go and wash out a few sing things. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah, good old Herky. Say, it's about time for the show to start, Edna. Maybe I better get up on the stage and start throwing those bulls a little corn. Hey, mm -hmm. Red, Red, yes, Red, you're yes. on. Yeah. Look, tell them give me a fanfare, Dell. Gee, I hate to go on. I'm telling you. The same thing happens that happened last year. I'm in the vegetable business again. <laughs> well, don't forget, this is another year. Yeah, but don't forget, these are the same jokes. <laughs> well, there's the trumpet of doom. Well, here goes nothing. Say, hey, Edna, what's Red so nervous about? Oh, he thinks the cops don't like him. No, uh, uh they really love him. <laughs> well, no vegetables yet. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Red. Red, yeah. try that pure fire joke about the cops. Oh, okay, I'll give him. Say, fellas, did you ever hear the one about the policeman who raided the nudist colony? And the big headlines in the paper the following day read, Bulls raid bears. I'll <laughs> 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 oh, get somebody else in a thing. You put that loud mouth out there. No, you said, now those cops will never like me. Say, you know what? I just happened to think of something. I've been entertaining here at the policeman's ball for the past three years, and every time the same thing has happened. And I just now realize why they'll never like Red Shelton. Why not? Why not? You know how mad bulls get when they see Red. <laughs> a new distinctive interpretation of a familiar favorite. Red Foley and the Avalon Chorus sing Roll Along Prairie Moon.
Thanks a lot, Bob Strong, for letting us in on those famous three little words. And what I have to say are just a few words that mean money in your pocket. Friends, when you can get supreme quality in Avalon's for less, why pay more? So the next time, ask for Avalon. And don't forget your change. Yes, Avalon cigarettes, dear friends, cross there with Miss Lamp and others. You too can save the difference like all of us Avalon brothers. Each pack is wrapped in fellow made, each pack is union made. No wonder folks from coast to coast say Avalon sing the parade. So why not always travel on with Yes, you'd never guess, but Avalon's cost only 10 cents plus city or state tax. Well, I guess that just about takes care of everything for tonight, eh, Del? Yes, Red, that polishes it off. Say, Del, when I get through with my course in pub uh, public speaking, <laughs> maybe I can tell my jokes in a cultivated voice, huh? Sure, Captain. Then you can give us cultivated corn. Yeah. Oh, you can't win. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. See you next week. <laughs> Be with us next Saturday evening at the same time when the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation will again present Avalon Time as our special guest star, a character you all know and love, the old-timer, featured artist on Fibber McGee and Molly's program. Del King speaking. Good night. The selection I never knew heaven to be performed on this program is from Rose of Washington Square. This is the National Broadcasting Company.